Well, good evening, lotties, lasses, and lasses. Welcome to the click you smell absolutely astounding today. And do not let anyone else tell you otherwise. We have covered a lot of beautiful internet things on this channel. We have covered things like insane parents and boomer behavior and Karen-esque behavior. But what if you combine all of them into one? And that is when you get a beautiful subreddit that we have surprisingly never covered on this channel. So welcome for the very first time to r slash entitled parents and my god, is it juicy. Enjoy. Mwah. A cousin abandoned my niece at my house while I was camping. Over the week, my husband and I went on a camping trip before summer season with its glorious warm weather was officially over. We weren't at home and had no cell phone reception where we were. We left Thursday, September 7th and returned on Monday, September 11th. While we were away, my cousin left my niece still strapped to her car seat outside my house door on Friday, September 8th. Wait. So she just left like a toddler still strapped to the seat, just out for the coyotes. And no one was even home. And no prior arrangements or anything. That is absolutely wild. And sent me some text messages. Remember, I had no cell phone reception where I was camping. I would never have known while I was gone. I saw the missed messages after returning home. It wasn't a request to ask if I can help her. It was simply a message notifying me that she left my niece in front of my door, along with a bag with her stuff for the weekend. She did not ask me beforehand if I could help her babysit. There was no possible way for me to know. Even if I knew, I would have still declined unless it was a medical emergency in the family and they had no other other choice. It is absolutely wild. Even without the camping stuff and no one being home, just not asking before dumping your kid on someone is absolutely wild. But I'm also assuming that's part of the strat here, right? They were probably hoping that by the time someone comes out of the house and sees the knees, they're already gonna be gone. So there's no one to argue with at all and they have no choice but to take the knees in. That's sort of the vibe I get from this. But then they weren't even home. And the niece is just, what, alone outside for three days? I live in a rural area where everyone is on a 30-acre plot of land, so no one knew my niece was there. I had no clue, the neighbors had no clue. My niece was literally abandoned in front of my door until Saturday noon when my parents came by to drop off parcels that were delivered to their house. That's when they saw my niece. How old is the niece in this story? I'm assuming they're still a pretty small child because they have a car seat, so they're probably somewhere between like, what, like, a couple years old to maybe like, five? Maybe something like that? It's like, it's a small child. My parents called my aunt and had her come pick her up. I can only assume that my parents, my aunt and my grandmother, scolded my cousin for leaving my niece at my door. When I got home, all I saw was the initial text messages telling me that my niece was dropped off at my place. <laughs> then a string of very rude text messages and voice messages from my cousin calling me irresponsible for leaving my niece outside and endangering her. <laughs> Wait a second. You're the one who literally left her outside without even checking that anyone was home. Oh my god, you're the irresponsible for leaving them alone. Are you actually kidding me? Oh my god, how clueless is this cousin? This is wild. Because what if the coyotes in my area attack the helpless infant? I, I was like literally joking about this. Uh, and it's, it's actually a thing in the area. Oh my god. I am just so frustrated. Honestly, this feels like the kind of thing that you should probably lose custody of your child for if there is someone else to even step in. Oh my god, that's absolutely wild. Just dumping your kid, your toddler, outside someone's door, not even checking if they're home and they're just, oh, if the parent hadn't been lucky enough to come by, this kid would have sitting on the porch, strapped in their chair for three days straight. That is absolutely insane. That is so wild. I feel so freaking bad for the kid in the situation. I really hope they don't do it again and that the kid is like too young to even remember it. But like, my god, fam, this is not promising for like how good these parents are gonna be in general. Yikes. A couple brought a toddler with squeaker shoes to a wedding. Mmm. Yeah, I can- Oh, oh, yeah, I can see how that's gonna end up beautifully. Some dear friends got married the other day, and it definitely was not a child-free wedding. And to the parents in attendance credit, the two toddlers were mostly well-behaved, as quiet as toddlers can be expected to be. Except for the goddamn shoes! The point at which it came to a climax of how the hell did you think this was acceptable was during the after-dinner speeches. <laughs> Parents and close friends delivered beautiful speeches. When I first met Jordan, they squeak, were uh, squeak, in the, the squeak, college squeak. Ca cafe squeak, cafeteria. Squeak, 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 squeak. I just stared daggers at this couple. How on God's green earth did either of them think, ah yes, wedding, get their shoes with the dog toy squeakers in them. People will definitely not hate us. <laughs> 
Yeah, they definitely didn't think twice about that one. Oh my god. It's like, oh, this will be fun for the kid. It will keep them entertained. The kid will be behaved because they have their funny shoes to run around with. Completely, like, forgetting the fact it makes noise for everyone else, too. Oh, no. I would die of shame if this was me. Holy sh**, man. My father-in-law had a meltdown because I proved he doesn't know his son. So me, 34M, and my husband, 30M, do our damnedest not to spend an abundance of time with my father-in-law. He's a cowardly narcissist who says hot dog unironically. Ever since I came into the picture, almost seven years ago, we have simply not meshed. A great deal of that is due to the fact that I've spent these years instilling confidence and boundary setting in husband. Father-in-law does not like being told no. We literally got kicked out of a restaurant one time because he couldn't accept they wouldn't give him a discount. <laughs> so needless to say, our interactions are nothing more than the exchanging of fake pleasantries. Oh my god, he sounds like a personification of the r slash boomer being full subreddit. That is absolutely gorgeous. So last week, we're over there for our quarterly visit. The way these evenings typically go is that my husband occupies my father-in-law, while my mother-in-law tests out her new English vocabulary on me. This time, my husband is doing the bulk of the talking to both of them because he's excited about the new organization he's working with. Father-in-law keeps trying to change the subject because it's been two seconds since the subject of the conversation was about him. My husband and my mother-in-law both snap. I am not entirely sure what they said, as my Spanish is still terrible, but it amounted to them telling father in law to shut the frick up and listen. father in law gets obstinate and essentially tells my husband that no matter what the organization is, it will never compare to the work he did in his youth. father in law literally just hiked through Central America with a white savior complex until things got violent and he came back home. My husband understandably storms out with my mother in law hot on his tail. Awkwardness ensues because I am chuckling at father in law. Father-in-law, he never spoke to me like that until you came along. I know, I am so proud. You've, you've changed him. No, this is who he's always been. You just never noticed it before. Ah, uh, no, my son. What's his favorite color? What, what is his favorite color? It's the same one he had as a kid. Uh, uh, name two of his interests. They, they don't make any sense. Name them. Uh, uh, here's an easy one. What's the name of the organization he's working with? Oh my god, like, I can understand the favorite color, right? It's like your favorite dinosaur. No one really asks you this when you become an adult. It's really sad. People just don't care about the relevant things after a certain age. It's absolutely disgusting. But not knowing where he works when it's like a new thing he's excited about that he literally talked about two minutes ago. Ah, ooh, ooh. This wannabe Bob Ross granola-eating mofo couldn't answer. My husband said the name of the organization like five times that night. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, sure, favorite color and stuff. Fine. I can I can see that, you know, getting passed up because no one really asks or care about it past a certain age, which is, which is a shame. But like, when they've literally been talking about it the whole night, it just shows that he doesn't pay attention to anything you're saying. You want to know the sad part? My parents can answer each and every one of those questions and have known your son a fraction of the time you have. Cue the the screeching in Spanish. Being yelled at in a foreign language by a non-native speaker is a surreal experience. Obviously, my husband comes back and yells back and it blows up even more. <laughs> but the part that stands out is the fact that Father Milá still refused to admit that he just hadn't taken a genuine interest in my husband in years. Like, bruh, you don't even know your kid's favorite color. Hello? Now my husband is contemplating going no contact and I can't blame him. I think there is a certain number of people in the world that for some reason never really emotionally mature past past the age of like 12, and once you're past a certain point, no one is gonna bother racing you past that point because it's such a pain in the butt and everyone is too busy with their own stuff. Look at this couple for example, they just opt to spend less time with the father-in-law instead of like trying to race him when he's literally older than they are. So no one is really correcting him, or at least when they try to, he just brushes us off anyway, so he will never actually mature past this point. Which is fascinating, for some reason they're just so stubbornly stagnant, it is, it is really fascinating fascinating in a way. My in-laws are suing me for part of ownership in my company. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> I don't think they can do this. Like, legally speaking, even if you're talking testament and stuff, they're at least one step removed from it. Like, the main thing would probably go to your wife, or maybe even, like, the other family or something like that, if it's specified. You know, this is... <laughs> they're, they're not gonna be the primary recipients of anything. <laughs> this is wild. This is just happening. It started today as I was served with papers. My husband and I, both male, had issues with him a while back that resulted in us going no contact. I have had my restaurant since I was in my 20s, long before my husband was even in my life. My in-laws felt that after we got married, it became a family business and they were entitled to ownership. <laughs> my in-laws felt 
that they own parts of the business, even though they're not even involved in the marriage. Like, did they sign anything, you know, that says they own part of the company? You know, even if you were to get divorced or something, it will go to your husband, not to them. They have nothing to do with this. This is wild. My husband and I have a prenup and a postnup that states my husband and his family have no stake in the business, and I am sole owner. And they know this and have known this. Oh my, that is even more wild. That is not even just like a default marriage contract. This <laughs> It's even further disconnected. Oh my god. This issue caused us to go no contact with his family because of their entitled greed. My husband is beyond pissed and my lawyer is assuring me they will lose. For some reason, I'm laughing about it. Just one more headache I did not need. Yeah, that is one thing. Even when people start being messy like this, even if they have no claim, and you know that it's gonna work out fine in the end, it's still a headache because you still have to reply to the paperwork and the lawyer stuff and the fees to come with it. It's still just such a nuisance. What what annoying in-laws, my god fam. <laughs> That is so entitled. I mean, you could also turn the whole thing around and say, why aren't the in-laws like supporting their, their child and their partner financially, for example? Why why are they so entitled that they expect their child's husband to like give them half the business out of nowhere? <laughs> it's wild, man. <laughs> entitled parents move my stuff at beach. Got ticketed for theft. Hi all, story that happened to me yesterday. I am on vacation at a touristy beach spot. Went out mid-morning to the beach before the crowds and set up my towel, umbrella, chair, cooler, etc. Around 11 a.m. while I was laying on my towel tanning with headphones in, I get a tap on my shoulder. I open my eyes to a middle-aged woman standing over me and her family and young kids starting to set up multiple umbrellas, chairs, toys about 10 inches behind me. When I took my headphones out, the woman started to tell me my bathing suit is inappropriate to be around her children, <laughs> so I will need to move. <laughs> Note, bathing suit is a cheeky bikini bottom, but not a thong. I tell her I was there first. They can find somewhere else to set up if it offends her. She proceeds to say there is no other close spots to the water. I tell her I'm not moving and put headphones back in. About an hour later, I decide to hop in the water for a dip to cool off. While in the water, I look at the shoreline and the woman has packed my stuff with her husband and is carrying it away from the area. I hop out of the water and get a lifeguard to call beach security while I watch them walking my stuff up the beach to relocate it. That is so petty. Are you serious? Beach security and myself approach them. They try to play dumb and say it's their stuff, so they ask to open the wallet to show ID. Surprise, it's my ID. They even doubled down. They even dubbed, they went so far that they tried to claim it's their stuff, so they would actually have stolen it, or at the very least claim it was temporarily theirs to not get into trouble. That is wild. What is up with these people always doubling down when they get caught? I mean, it makes it a bit more sweet when karma actually hits, because then you can't deny it wasn't malicious, but come on, man, it's so petty. The cops are then called, and I chose to press charges for theft. And I got my spot back since the family was escorted, kicked off the beach. <laughs> you can't do that, you can't literally steal someone's stuff because you want the beach spot. <laughs> Oh my god, that is so incredibly wild. I bet these are the same kind of people that think that the police are their own personal army that they can call, for example, when someone at McDonald's messes up their order. You know, I bet it's the exact same people. My daughter's father wants to use her as therapy for his wife. What on earth does that mean? I, 33F, going to preface this by saying my six-year-old daughter's father, 37M, I'm going to call him Jeff, has never been my romantic partner. We had a one-night stand. I don't like people calling him my ex, since it makes it seem like we had a kind of emotional attachment. He was never involved after I told him I was pregnant, and actually wanted me to terminate the pregnancy. But I decided to raise my child alone, since I have enough money to raise her without child support. For the whole pregnancy and the first four years, Jeff was not in the picture. On my mother's recommendation, I did send him pictures and invited him to special events, but he always replied that he had no interest in my daughter. Two years ago, he reappeared and began demanding parental rights. When I didn't do what he wanted, he sued and was told no, he was not getting parental rights. Yeah, I mean, you can't just sue out of nowhere, that is absolutely wild. Like, you chose not to be in the picture and chose not to pay child support, then you're definitely not, not a parent in this picture. You have you have no right to this, what are, you, what are you kidding me? He was given the offer to pay child support and then we can revisit giving him actual rights, but he has refused. Ah, oh, yes, indeed. All the benefits, but no responsibility. It's very convenient, isn't it? <laughs> he has the money, much more than me, but he refuses. 
I still offer to let him see my daughter in a casual manner. No child support needed, with the agreement anything legal, medical, or educational will not involve him. He pushed the boundaries and we had a fallout. Yeah, I think you're being way too kind to him with that offer, to be honest. I mean, I understand wanting to be the bigger person, especially when there are kids and more people involved, right? But uh, he's obviously not a particularly stand-up person. After that, we didn't hear from him for almost six weeks before he called to meet for Christmas. After much discussion, I agreed to bring my daughter over on the condition my daughter's godparents could come. Thus, we went over for Christmas dinner, and finding out Jeff is married and has never told his family he had a child. It was great to be judged by a bunch of strangers. <laughs> oh my god! No way! It was uncomfortable the whole time. I'm going to use fake names, but let's say my daughter's name is Katie. His wife kept calling my daughter Gabrielle. Not the actual name she used, but it was different than my daughter's name. That's one thing I'll never understand, like being petty towards the kid in the situation. It's just an innocent child. Like, if you're gonna blame someone, blame your husband that hasn't told you everything about his past. In that case, it's his fault in that case. And he's the one inviting the kid, obviously. Like, the kid is completely innocent in this. Why are you being petty towards the child? That's just, like, toxic stepmom vibes, I swear to God. The wife was also very physical, trying to pick up my daughter or parent her. I would block her or tell her to please let me deal with my child. The whole time she pretty much ignored me, but Katie didn't seem nervous, so I decided to just bid my time. I hit my limit when my daughter said she needed the bathroom and the stranger went, Oh, Gabby, you need potty? Let mommy change you. Oh my god, okay, so now it's not only petty, now it's literally trying to just strong arm out the actual mom. That is so bad, fam. My daughter hasn't worn diapers in a while now, and she's more than capable of going alone to the bathroom. I immediately told her to stay away from my daughter and that we were leaving. The woman started wailing that I was kidnapping her baby girl and tried to lunge at me. Wait a second, you're, you're saying that someone else is kidnapping their own child that you only met for the first time like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> That's the art. That's the argument. Kidnapping, really. <laughs> People are insane, man. Her in-laws got in the middle and hold her, consoling her and saying that we weren't leaving and for her to calm down like she was the victim. What, what are you talking about? Oh, somebody's just leaving. She's being overly weird and overly like ownershipy over a kid that isn't hers. And they're like, ah, oh, this is getting uncomfortable. We're gonna leave. And she's like, oh my God, kidnapping. They're kidnapping their own child from me. Because I'm the mom now, <laughs> this kid. I just met 20 minutes ago and I was petty enough to to like get their name wrong on purpose But now I suddenly own the child <sighs> These people man. What, what what's with these people at that point? I just glared at Jeff and told him he better explain or I would be calling the police He asked me to speak in private in another room and I could just leave my daughter with his parents No way that would ever happen. Katie's godparents took her with them despite the wife having a full meltdown Jeff and I spoke outside, and he explained that he and his wife recently lost a daughter. That is so sad. I mean, the grieving is very understandable, but it still doesn't justify, like, literally trying to, like, claim that someone else is kidnapping their own child. That's a really wild response. I'm not going to give specific details on that. All I will say it was sudden and nobody's fault. And I can only imagine it caused some psychological issues to his wife. Apparently had the brilliant idea that having Katie pass as their lost child would help his wife. Without telling me. Oh my, oh my god, this is like some Black Mirror episode stuff. And that's why he wanted visitations and parental rights. He pleaded for me to leave my daughter with him for a little bit. I asked him what was his plan when his wife heals. That is so, no, no, this is not healthy for anyone. Oh my god, wait a second, is that why the wife was calling the child a name that wasn't actually the child's name? Was that the name of the child that passed away? This is getting, like, really dark and weird really fast. I thought it was just someone being, like, really quirky and weird with, like, you know, they get overly attached to people and stuff too quickly. But, but th this is, like, a whole different rabbit hole of darkness. This is wild. His response was disgusting. Well, I'll just send Katie back with you, and it will just be like before. Oh, so you're just gonna temporarily adopt the child you had no involvement with up until this point in your life, until your wife has, like, healed enough? And then you're just gonna send the kid back. That doesn't sound very nice for the kid either. They're just gonna be tossed around between different homes for, for no good reason, apparently. Oh my god, fam. That's, that's not... No, this is not how you treat kids. Are you kidding me? I told him he was insane if he thought I would let him use my daughter like that. What his wife needs is therapy with a professional, not feeding her delusions. And I would not let that woman within miles from my daughter. He told me I was being cruel and didn't know the pain of losing a child. I agreed with him, but reminded Jeff that my priority is not his 
family. It's my child. What he and his family do to work through their grief has nothing to do with us. I also told him to call his lawyer because I am making sure he never has contact with my child. So that's what I'm bracing for. He's been blasting my phone since Christmas, but I can easily ignore him. My daughter and I are doing a small travel vacation. This isn't an update, just something I feel needs to be said. My daughter is set for life monetarily. She has a trust fund and I make really good money in my position. If she was 18 right now, I could put her through college without a loan. She doesn't need child support for her quality of life. If I could get child support and never worry about her father trying something, I would be suing him in a heartbeat. But after talking to the lawyer and realizing the risk, I have taken the decision that my child support or possible inheritance is not worth my child's safety. Safety is always first. Yeah, in this instance, that definitely sounds like the thing. If they're willing to use the child as like a tool for therapy, but then just dump the child again as soon as the therapy is officially over, that's like really toxic and it's not particularly good for the child. Like that just creates complete instability in the child's life because they don't know which household they can trust to view as their actual home and they don't know who's going to be there for them genuinely. Th this is not a good thing to introduce to the child. I think, I think definitely that's the right choice, especially since finances isn't an issue. Then it makes perfect sense to have like good finances and good safety versus slightly better finances but no safety you know it's it's a pretty easy choice honestly i hope this husband leaves this person and the kid alone and i also hope they actually get uh, get the other wife some some real help because my god that cannot be healthy for anyone involved that is absolutely wild what a, what a horrible person to have in the middle of all this that is so bad for everyone you are ruining my body i made it it is mine wait is this an entitled parent claiming that their child's body belongs to them because they birthed it or something is that where this is going so this happened two years ago when I got my first tattoo. I was 21 and still living with my controlling mother. She was shocked when I told her I wanted to get a tattoo, but she didn't physically stop me. I got home with my upper arm tattooed, solar system with watercolors, to find her in the living room, crying. She started talking about how I ruined her body by getting that tattoo, about how she made my body so it's hers. Oh my god, that's literally where it went. I called it. I've seen enough of these variants, unlike r slash insane parents. It is wild wild how common this is. She asked if I cried while getting it. I told her I didn't because it didn't really hurt at all. She yelled at me, of course you cried. I cried because I knew what you were doing to my body. She calmed down after a while and said my tattoo looked nice, but I felt really gross after that. She also flipped out when I got my hair cut. My sisters and I were always told that she would sue any hairstylist to dare to cut our hair. What, you gotta go through life without ever <laughs> cutting your hair? So it took me till I was 19 to finally get short haircut, and she cried when I got my first piercing too. This woman is nuts sometimes. A little edit, I do not know how my grandmother would feel about this whole thing. My mother cut contact with her before I was born, because she was physically abusive towards my mother. My mother's siblings and my siblings. Okay, sounds like some uh, generational goodies. My god. But yeah, that mom is definitely, definitely overly controlling. Like, it's okay to be concerned about your kid, for example, in certain instances. Like, you know, it's the kind of thing where you want your kid to have enough freedom, but sometimes you step in when they're doing obviously dangerous stuff or whatever it is. But this certainly isn't that kind of stuff. And just being that upset when someone gets a haircut or a tattoo or a piercing or something and claiming it's her body, that is absolutely wild. That is so unhealthy. Oh my god, that is... Oh, oh no. I mean, uh, assuming you still have any kind of contact at that point, I'll be fascinated to know how this how this mother reacts when you decide to, like, get married or something. <laughs> That'd be absolutely wild. Is she gonna lash out, for example, at the future partner, like husband or wife or, <laughs> or something, if, if she still thinks it's her body? <laughs> oh my god. Like, how far will this go? A neighbor opens my parcel and shouts at me for the contents. I can't actually believe this conversation just happened. The sheer entitlement and ridiculousness of it made me laugh but also left me speechless. I ordered a mug from Amazon as a gift to my best mate. The mug had the C word on it with the C as the handle. Oh, that's kind of a nifty design. I, I appreciate the creativity. A cute mug would recommend Smiley. Anyway, there is a house on the street next to mine that has a very similar address to mine. And I will often get their post and they will sometimes get mine. For example, my address would be something like number 6 random street. And theirs is number 6 random side street. It's annoying as they are different, plus mine is one word, but the names of myself and that family are so wild 
wildly different that you would think the postman or any delivery driver might have got used to that by now. But I digress. I had the notification from Amazon that said my mug had been delivered and in the safe place. I go to check and it isn't. So I go around to similar addresses house and see if it was indeed there and get no answer. I decide that I will try again later and or they will bring it over before I contact Amazon. A few days pass and they don't bring my parcel around so I get Amazon to replace it. But then half an hour ago there was a knock on my door. I open the door to the father of the family at similar address holding my Amazon parcel that's been opened and he quite literally throws it at me. Before I can form words he says, my 11 year old child opened that. Don't you ever order something so disgusting again. How dare you? <laughs> Wait a second. So you not only admit that you opened someone else's mail, which is legal, by the way, you also try to like dictate what someone else at another address is allowed to order. <laughs> oh my god. And started to storm off. I register what the hell he just said and I shout after him. Wait, what the? No one should be opening my post anyway. It's a criminal offense. How dare you have the cheek to come to my house and berate me for opening my mail? He just waved his hand at me dismissively and carried on walking. I just stood there for a good minute trying to figure out if that actually happened. Well, it did, and now I have two <laughs> Singapore mugs. I'm so tempted to leave one at his doorstep with a note saying, You can keep it, mate. It's definitely been made for you. Oh my god. Or just order one in his name to his address so he keeps getting <laughs> Singapore mugs. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's a good little prank to do. Oh my god. What an awful neighbor. I remember reading kind of a similar story on r slash traumatized them back and a neighbor kept opening this person's packages and like having their child open it because the child like opening packages until they actually ordered like a tarantula. <laughs> they had a tarantula loose in their house and it traumatized them enough to never touch the mail again. So that is the, that's one solution I suppose. Order a tarantula or like a snake or something. <laughs> Hell yeah. A lady wanted me to put ice in my drink. I answered with stupid. I was chilling in a cafe Rio yesterday, and I decided to go fill up my drink. So as I was standing in line to fill up my drink, this lady and maybe her six-year-old kid were also in the line. Right ahead of me, in fact. So the kid was about to go get his drink when his mom stopped him and told him to put ice in his drink first, because everyone gets ice in their drink. So he moved out of the way, and I went ahead to get my drink instead. I am halfway through filling up my drink when this lady puts her hand in front of my face and directs my ice towards hers. And then she's pointing at the ice machine. Everyone puts ice in their drink, she told me as she was pointing at it. <laughs> and apparently I was tired as hell because I looked her dead in the eye and without cracking any smile or emotion whatsoever, I told her, oh, my bad, I'm allergic to ice. She had this shocked and confused expression. Then she and her kid just went on their merry ways. I filled up my drink and sat down. Then after looking at my phone for a few minutes, I look up to see her real angry, arguing with a random worker pointing at me. Oh my god, is she really gonna make a fuzz because you didn't do what she told her child to do and now you have to like obey her just like her child did because otherwise she loses authority with her child? Is that the reasoning here? I feel like that would be the only like, well, logical explanation is a very strong word, but it's the only explanation I can think of. Honestly, I decided it wasn't worth it, and seeing as I was finished eating, I just threw my stuff away and bounced. I woke up this morning thinking, what the hell was even that? Yeah, I think it's an entitled parent that just felt their authority over their kids was, like, challenged by a stranger, and also in front of the child. So now they have to make sure the child sees when they go Karen mode on this random customer. <laughs> it's very important. And what a horrible precedent these parents set for their kids. Absolutely wild. My daughter's father wants to use her as therapy for his wife. Update. Oh, it's the update to that story about the young child and they wanted to bounce her between the families for therapy because of their own loss. Okay. Hey everyone, I decided to post a last update since I will be going full silent for a long period. For those that didn't know, right now I'm dealing with my daughter's father and his delusion. He wants to use my daughter as a therapy doll for his wife that recently lost a child. A lot of people were worried for my daughter and me, and I truly appreciate it. We're both safe, she's currently having a great vacation with her godparents, and I am currently making my own arrangements to move on. My lawyer is working hard on keeping everything in order. I know a cease and desist was his first action and we are going for no contact. He says we have a solid case and hopefully this will resolve relatively fast. And by that, I mean a year or two. Yeah, legal stuff is typically slower than you would like. We did get a temporary restraining order. It's only until our first court date, but after it could be extended. 
I haven't had direct contact with Jeff. He lawyered up too and tried to send a threat to take full custody. <laughs> That is absolutely wild. Oh my god. I wonder what his plan is to do with the kid after his wife uh, recovered, so to say. I, I, wa I wonder what like the actual long-term plan is, because he obviously doesn't care about the child. That is absolutely wild. That's the wildest part, how you can be like so, so incredibly lack of empathy towards this kid. That is so insane. My lawyer laughed at it since his reasoning was a parental alienation, <laughs> but he specifically didn't want to be in the kid's life and declined any of it, even the casual stuff. Except I have proof I tried for years to have him involved. Apparently, turning in a few emails showing my attempts was enough to get them to change parental alienation to a different reasoning. My lawyer is not worried at all, honestly. For now, I decided after much thinking that moving is going to be necessary. It won't be something I can do on a whim, but I'll be looking into new houses within a month to hopefully move sometime this year. School will remain the same, but we will be speaking to the admin to make sure only certain people can pick her up, and part of that decision has been to hire a private driver. He is someone I absolutely trust and has worked for relatives in the past, so I'm very comfortable with the idea and so is my daughter. Now I just have to make sure they don't go for fast food every day after school. Things in all honesty are not that scary right now. I have a good lawyer, good evidence, and my little girl is happy and healthy. So I'm just going to focus on working things little by little. Because of the legal proceedings, I don't think I'll be posting any updates anytime soon. And though sending me direct messages telling me I'm horrible for keeping my daughter from her father, or telling me I shouldn't have had her in the first place, please kindly speak to the void. I am too busy. Oh, and there's another update. Hey, doing an unexpected update. My lawyer just called me to let me know that Jeff was arrested. I am not aware what the charges are. Short of being a murderer, I'll be realistic, he's probably going to be out as soon as his parents post bail. That said, I have to admit, a petty side of me rather happy since, depending on the circumstance, it might help in my bid to get a permanent no-contact order. Yeah, that will definitely work in your favor. If you're like, if you're having custody battles over kids and one of the parents literally have a very recent criminal record, that will definitely work in your favor. My god. My daughter is doing great, by the way. She's been making a list of new school gear she wants for March, when she goes back to school. I've also been talking to my job about a chance to work in another country. We will see. Thanks to everyone who has messaged me. You guys have great recommendations, and I read them all. I couldn't keep up with all the messages, but the vast amount helped a lot. If anything happens directly on my own case, I'll post later on. For now, I have a few months before we go into court again. I'm really happy to hear that the kid is doing well, at least. That's like, the, that's like one of the biggest concerns in situations like this, that the kid gets really stressed out or get really pressed by other adults that are like manipulating them and pushing them against people and that kind of stuff. So it's really nice to hear them doing that well. And that criminal record is definitely gonna work in your favor. I mean, of course, depending on how serious it is, I mean, but, uh, but usually that would be the case. It's also really wild to me they're not actually backing off. Most people back off when stuff actually hits the fan. Like, a lot of people, especially in the US and those kind of places, will, will like, scare people with suing and that kind of stuff. Like, oh, I'll sue you back and forth, blah, blah, blah. But when push actually comes to shove, most people back down when they realize they don't actually have a case. But I'm really surprised they're pushing so hard for this and legitimately believe they have a case. Or maybe they're hoping for the other party to fold. Like, they will try to be like, no, no, we're not worried about this going to court and hope that the mother is going to fold and, like, agree to their insane insane expectations. So I'm really happy this mother is actually standing up for herself and her kid. What a what a what a massive spine this lady has. That is absolutely bonkers. Hell yeah. That is mad respect. Everyone deserves a parent like this. Ask me to get out of the wheelchair spot on the bus for her stroller. I am a wheelchair user and was taking the bus like I always do. There is a specific spot in the front of the bus that are for disabled people and the elderly to use. I was sitting in my wheelchair strapped into the bus, and a woman with a twin stroller got on and asked me if I could get off so she could put a stroller where I was parked. <laughs> I told her that I would absolutely not. This spot was for disabled people, not her stroller, and she can take the next bus if she really needs to. She tells me she has an appointment to get to, so I tell her right back that she can fold her stroller up and go further into the bus if she really needs to take this one, but I am not moving. She gestured at my crossed legs and she had the balls to ask me to fold up my wheelchair and walk it further back. I am able to walk, just not much. I literally just started laughing and she accused me of faking my disability. Oh my god, what is up with these people, man? She refused to move out the front of the bus area where the driver can't have people and was promptly kicked off the bus. Good luck getting to that appointment, lady. But that is so wild. That is so incredibly wild. Yeah, some people just lose their minds when they think the world is gonna cater to them. Especially to this extent. Can you fold up your wheelchair? I think you're faking your disability. Because I am late for my appointment. And I, I need to get my stroller here and I can't possibly fold it up. 
Oh my god. Some people really unironically suffer from main character syndrome, don't they? My parents don't like my boyfriend, so they gave me an ultimatum. Looking for experience and opinions. All are welcome. I'll try to make a long story short. I am an only child and my current boyfriend and I have been dating for six years. Starting when I was 19 and he was 20. We met at junior college where we started dating and after that we went to different UCs but within an hour of each other. My parents met him early on by joining us at dinner. Everything seemed to be going well. Then soon after, we went to his parents' house who lived about two hours from my parents so I could meet his family. And after learning this, my mom told me how hurt she was that we didn't come to see them too. I expressed that this weekend was for me to meet his family, but it was clear that she almost felt betrayed. Fast forward, my parents invite me up to the cabin and my boyfriend joins. We take my car because it was already loaded with laundry, etc. After we arrived, my dad pulls me aside and pretty much quietly yells at how wrong it is that I drove and that we took my car. He's the man. He should be driving. Blah, 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 blah. This started everything going forward in a sour note. The cabin isn't a hoey. It gets cold in the winter. So my boyfriend wore a sweatshirt with his hood up during some of the time in the cabin. My parents, to this day, cite this as weird and rude as well as a reason they don't like him. <laughs> because he didn't drive to a cabin he doesn't know where it is. And he wore a hoodie when it was cold. Yeah, that doesn't seem like deal breakers to me, I'm gonna be honest. As we continued our relationship, it's clear that my parents don't like him, but they can't really give up on what I would call a good or justifiable reason. They will say that he's not just a good fit for the family. They don't tell me to stop dating him, because they can't, I'm an adult, but they do tell me that I need to keep them and him separate. They don't want to really hear about him and he's not welcome at their house or cabin. He's never cheated on me, abused me, has no drug problems, etc. Nothing that a normal parent would cite as a problem. Problem. Eventually, it became an ultimatum given to me by my parents. They would tell me that if you continue to date him, eventually it will be either him or us, and you will have to choose. Among other things, they would tell me that he would never be an attorney, which is what he wanted to do, and insinuating that he probably wouldn't be much of anything at all. After undergrad, I started working at a financial firm. He graduated from undergrad at UC Berkeley and was accepted to a law school across the country. We were always very serious about each other and made the decision to do long distance until he graduated and moved back to CA. My boyfriend has since graduated from law school, moved home, and took the bar last month. He starts work this October and had a contract since last year. They have known about this as well. Now, six years into our relationship, I call my parents and tell them we're going to be moving in together. About 20 minutes later, I get a text from my mom saying that she doesn't want to rain on my parade, but says that this path excludes her and my dad from my future. Oh my god, Jesus Christ. Even the parents' slight like, concern about the boyfriend not doing well for himself, are also, like, false. They're both doing amazingly fine and their relationship seems to be on a good good standing. What are they complaining about? They're turning the relationship to be something about them instead of something for their daughter. They don't even care if the daughter is happy or not. They just, they don't like the person. So then it's not the right relationship, even though everything is good. That is, that is a wild attitude, man. They're telling me that they love me, but they can't be in my life if I choose to be with my boyfriend. I told them I would never understand. Since then, they have sent me more and more text messages saying stuff like, We feel like we're losing our daughter, and this is heartbreaking, etc. And all at the same time, including that this is my choice and my fault. I texted my parents that I thought my boyfriend and I should come over and talk. That texting about this kind of thing is stupid, but not to be patronizing or belittled as if it turns into screaming, then we would leave. My parents then replied that they wanted to see me face to face to talk, but that my boyfriend isn't allowed. <laughs> okay, so they're just trying to, like, get you alone so they can maybe try to convince you or manipulate you in, into getting rid of the other person. But they won't speak to the both of you at the same time as adults. But they also can't cite the issues for why they wouldn't be able to do so. Yeah, this, uh, ooh, ooh, that seems, that seems weird, fam. That seems weird. I wonder if they're just having a problem that someone else is closer to their child nowadays than they are themselves. I wonder if it's like a control issue that is just like extending into their influence in their child's relationships. My boyfriend even called my father the night of the initial we can't be part of your life text to try to talk or meet up and see if there was any way to talk through any legitimate concerns. My dad did not answer and responded a week later and only texted him that they weren't really fond of him. That he wants to work through it with me alone. <laughs> And it's mine and my boyfriend's fault for not trying to address things earlier. 
Oh my god! Among other ridiculous reasons to not like my boyfriend were Berkeley isn't a man's college. My dad. He has a lot of, he has a lot of like, uh, weird man takes, doesn't he? That's absolutely wild. But one time in college, my professor lost my final exam. And when I find out via email grades and was frantically calling her to figure out what happened, my parents told my boyfriend, See, this is why we didn't want her to have a boyfriend in college. They found ways to blame him for everything. Wait a second, what? What do they mean? Boyfriend in college. So if he wasn't in college, that random professor that he doesn't even have anything to do with wouldn't have lost the papers? Is that the argument? That is insane. The only thing that ever had any merit was that he wasn't working yet. Well, this was because he was going to school to be a lawyer. Apparently marrying someone who will make a lot of money is a bad thing? My boyfriend is the nicest, most common, peaceful person ever, and he loves me more than anything. But apparently their pride is more important than being wrong in accepting him. I guess I'm just trying to figure out if this is normal, or if it's as wrong as it feels to my boyfriend and I. Yeah, this, sound, this sounds pretty, pretty wild, honestly. Like, if the parents had legitimate, tangible concerns, you know, like, oh, he's uh, he's just sitting around playing video games all day and, and doesn't seem interested in working or, like, building a future for the both of you together, like, as, you know, both partners should be should be interested in, or he's mistreating you in some way, or, you know, any, any stuff like that. Like, yeah, th then I can see, like, legitimate concerns. But there isn't anything tangible here that would make them actually concerned for your well-being. It sounds more like they're just upset and they would disapprove of your boyfriend no matter what he did. Like the concern is that he isn't working and making money, but then he gets a job and starts making good money, but he's still a problem. Okay, so then that wasn't actually the, the tangible problem now, was it? So it seems that no matter what he does, he's still like on the pool list, so to say. He will never be good enough because I think they're just not interested in accepting your partner. And uh, that is a shame. A boyfriend, as well as my parents and myself, are of the same race. Somewhat similar financial status as well. No important details left out, I promise. I wanted objective feedback. Believe me, if there was more, my parents would make it known to me and I would have included it in the post. I mean, that's a good note that was like another reason I was gonna bring out. Like, maybe they're just closeted racists and it's something like that. You know, he's not the right skin color. But, uh then that's not the case either. That is so weird. Then honestly, if I would go out on a limb in stuff like this, I would say that they would just disapprove of any partner you had because they feel like you, their child, is slipping away from them. And they can't really explain that feeling or don't want to explain it, so they're trying to make up other things. And when those other things are actually dealt with or not an actual problem, then they can't justify it in any tangible way. So it just becomes this weird, really... I wouldn't even call it passive-aggressive, it's just straight-up aggression. <laughs> That is wild. I hope you're doing okay. Entitled mother is suing me for custody of my daughter. Wait a second, so this is not actually like the mother as in the mother of the child. This is like the mother of you. So the grandparent of the child is trying to sue for custody. Oh my god, why are there so many like wild custody stories? I, 22F, caught contact with my mother before Halloween. The reason was that she's trying to force me to have my abuser in my life. Her husband did very bad things to me when I was 13 to 15 and even worse things when I was 15. I cut her off after she made a fuss about him not being invited to any of my events or my home. Yeah, yeah, I can see why. It's pretty simple. It's like, uh, hey, I'm an adult now and I can actually choose who I want around. This person who did these awful things to me and traumatizing things when I was a teenager and couldn't really choose for myself and also the other parent that was like defending it. Yeah. Now that seems like a pretty good reason to not want them in your house, I'm gonna be honest. I have not invited people to my house for way less. Oh my god, man. I had enough of her disrespecting me and my boundaries. Yeah, this, this is so past the point of just like respecting boundaries. This is the kind of stuff you should like call the police about. That is absolutely nuts. I haven't talked to her for almost two months. Two months ago, I went no contact. I found out she was suing for sole custody. I have checked my mailbox last week on Tuesday, the 14th, and I have been served with those papers. I couldn't believe what I saw. I was flabbergasted. I am freaking out because I don't know what to do. I brought this to my older sister's attention, my sister's from my father's side of the family. She said that she would pay for my lawyer in any legal expenses. That is so nice, though, that you have family around that will actually be supporting you. This that, that is so nice, though. That is so nice. I have blocked my mother on all social media. I've had cousins screenshot her post and send them to me. She is telling her Facebook friends that I am trafficking drugs in my house, that I am drunk 24-7 and I'm back on drugs, which I have been sober for four years. I am clean as a whistle. She posted I am prostituting. She's telling all kinds of lies. She even said on her Facebook, and I quote, It's not fair that she won't let me see my granddaughter. And it's not fair that she won't let my husband see her granddaughter. I am her mother. I should have rights to see her baby. 
like the entitlement. How would you handle this? Edit, I also told my mother about the abuse and she did frick all. She told me I was a liar, blamed me and defends him. Honestly, if this was me, I would probably sue her back for defamation and send a cease and desist because this kind of stuff she's actually done in a public forum, which is really stupid to do because normally, you know, it would be difficult to prove that someone has actually lied or defamed and that kind of stuff because you have to prove that they actually said it and the harm it's done, blah, blah, blah. But now she's actually gone out of her way to post this publicly on social media, which means that the evidence is pretty black on white. And also you can prove like real malicious intent because she's lying about things that would both potentially get you in trouble with, for example, jobs, it will get you in trouble with, for example, custody with your child. So it's very easy to prove intent of very serious damages. And she's done this incredibly publicly where it's very black and white that this has actually been said. So uh, I would probably go on the offensive in this, especially if you have family that that's supporting you in this, that might be the only way to get people like this to stop. Sometimes in life, bullies only respond to like treating them the same way back. So if she's trying to bully you with a lawyer, for example, the one way to make her stop is just smack back. And then she she realizes how many lines she has actually crossed when she realizes the law isn't magically on her side, even though she's she's acting like this. But that is absolutely horrible. I'm, I'm really glad to hear you have family on your side, at least, that are supporting you, but that is an awful situation. I do hope they stop soon and that you get through it fine. My God. Well, laddies, lasses, and lassos, I do hope you enjoyed being here today as much as I enjoyed having you here today, reading through these fascinating and sometimes horrifying stories together. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day because you do deserve it, and I will see you in the very next video. Take care. Mwah.